Bear and Cisco and EMC and making sure that they bring in the right people to bear to solve the problem for us. Okay, so, so David, I'm interesting how you put together that B block because one of the biggest opportunities we usually see is just uh, going from purchase to deployment to kind of that getting you up and running. It, it really helps, but mm -hmm. uh, sounds like you had a really good experience and it, it's still transforming some of your environments. So, uh, you know, have you quantified at all, kind of, kind of the, the, the return on your investment there, or um, just operationally how you can run more efficiently? Have not necessarily gone and figured exactly what it, what it has saved us as far as cost, um, but it has made us, it, it provides us with the opportunity to, to remain dynamic, and it gives us a better, we're able to become, uh, excuse me, we're able to go faster from development to market be by using the equipment we purchased and the, and the back end support that we've got. Um, our developers come up with something that they want to try and we can go ahead and throw it on the B block and build out an environment for them to test and develop with. And inst instead of having to buy dozens of servers, we can throw up a dozen VM VMs and have everything running. And having the support on the back end, knowing that it's, it's supported and maintained makes it much easier for us to go forward. Right, so, so some, of, some of that time to market was uh, some of the core value proposition of virtualization in general, yes. and, and it sounds like VBlock is extending that, yes. and uh, you know, where, where do you stand on the whole discussion of kind of a private cloud? Do you consider your infrastructure a private cloud and is VBlock uh, part of enabling that? We are definitely a private cloud, um, although my manager doesn't like the term cloud, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Um, the terms don't matter, it's the, the results it's the that results, matter, right? Exactly. <laughs> it, the, it gives us the ability, our developers have no idea, not that, or don't normally have any idea of what their back-end storage is, what the, what the process behind it is. All they really want is they need to know that they're going to get the, the, the hardware installation they need, which is the IOPS, the storage, amount of storage, and, and things of that nature, and the performance characteristics they're expecting, and the V-Block gives us the ability to roll that out very quickly. Instead of having to, to buy more and more equipment, we've got, we can just flag it into the VM, we can fit the profile to match the, what, what's needed, and it just makes our life easier. So, uh, you, you also said you were responsible for backup. Yes, sir. So, what's your, your backup strategy with this box and this international set of uh, data centers that you have? We are in the process of actually building out a global backup enterprise. Um, using networker and, and data domain systems. Um, we are going to have a large data domain 890 box in our main data center in Virginia, and then at our at six locations around the world where we've got other data repositories will be smaller DD160s, which is a small small data domain yeah. box. And they'll back up the information that are in those sites, and then it will all be brought back to the main box as a uh, repository, as a replication so that we can have the data off-site and available anywhere else in the event of something happening. So you've got one major center, and that's the gold, that's the gold copy, if it said. For right now, correct, right, yes. Right. Eventually okay. that will be duplicated as well. Yeah, and, and duplicate that, okay, good. And uh, with, with, do you get a good uh, um, compression with all that amount of video and pictures, et cetera, is that, or? In our, we're still in the testing phase and still in the build-out phase, but in our current, the way we've got it right now, on our file shares, which are largely unstructured data, sure. the fi yeah. pictures and yeah. sound bites, I'm getting about a two to one compression. Okay. Um, in our testing with VMware, we're getting 35x compression right. on the VM. Right. So your date, your mileage will vary, <laughs> but it's def the deduplication rates we're seeing are astounding. So yeah. and it, what well, you can store you. 70 terabytes of information in the space of seven or two in the, in the case of our VMware, the, the savings sure. are just amazing. Yeah, okay, excellent. So I, I also understand you've got the cloud tiering appliance. What, how does that work? How are you using that? What's the value proposition there? What we, what we found when going through our data classification in, in, in all the years we've gone is it, we're, we're the same as everybody. Our, our data gets stale and we've got millions of files that are that have not been touched in a long period of time so rather than keeping them in our main storage environment or in our main backup chain we've archi we use those archive we've archived those off the cloud tiering appliance allows us the ability to to have that policy structure in place and it handles the the motion of the data so it'll migrate from the main data storage where it is in the 
current environment to a Centera, in the future environment we're still determining, it's, it's probably going to be on three terabyte drives in the VNX. But it, what it does is it allows it, it says if this hasn't been touched in a certain amount of time or modified or whatever, move it from this place to this place, but keep a pointer so that, some, yeah. so that my end users have no idea where that actually exists. And it's going back to the cloud thing. It doesn't matter where the store, where the data lives, as long as they can access it. Right. So, so you can just they, the stop. They can get hold of it. If, correct. If they, if they need it, they yeah, yeah. If they need it, it's available to them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do, on the on the uh, VNXs, yeah. etc. Do you have uh, fast uh, VP or fast cache? We or, have the fast suite them? enabled on it. Right. Um, currently, we've only got the fast cache set up and running because we of what we purchased when we did it. Um, Still, I have not got enough data on that box yet. I'm still in the process of migrating to it to get a real feel, real for, feel for yeah. exactly how much it's going to save us. Yeah. But from initial results, we're we're seeing some good some good numbers. Great, so. good, okay. So, what advice would you give to practitioners uh, about uh, your journey to the cloud and virtualization? What are the things that have really gone well? What what, what things what what things if you'd known beforehand, you would have said, hey, maybe you, you want right. to do it this way or not that way. Um, a big part of it is just trusting in the vendors what you're, that you're working with. I mean, EMC, VMware, Cisco have all gotten this product together and, made, and it really does make life, your life easier in the long run if you just let it work together instead of trying to fight it. We, we did some things where we tried to fight it a little bit along the way and you know configurations and things like that but once you just let it start working and, and, and you know trust in it it's going to make your life easier uh, the VMware side of things we've built out and just kept on building and we keep on adding things to it um, you know we've virtualized some database stuff that we some our MySQL databases and, and our web front end and, and things like that and it's it's definitely made us much more flexible and, and much faster what we can do with things so, so, David, I have just one final question for you. Um, in this journey, kind of to private cloud deployment, you know, what what has that done to uh, the, the the workforce? To, from from an organizational standpoint, was there any restructure, retraining uh, that you had to go through, or anything politically that uh, you should give people warnings about or advice? Um, it's we, our team is a very small, dynamic team. Um, we Rosetta is, itself is a is a very fast paced technology company so we've got a lot of really good people there and they have picked they have picked up the pieces and parts especially with the VMware and the storage and the networking and made it all work together um, if we didn't have the people we had I don't know where we'd be obviously the people are always at the bottom line um, but us going going to the cloud has been a you know has helped us with our product launches and things of that nature. Uh, well, David Gutschow of Rosetta Stone, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And uh, SiliconANGLE TV's live continuous coverage from EMC World will be back in one moment. <laughs>